right, the domain of this function in interval notation. It gave us this little table right there. You can ignore that for now. We'll come back to it, but right now just ignore it, okay? Because we just want to focus on that interval. So we look on the inside of that uh, radical, the square root, which is x minus 3, right? Well, if we could get that to be greater than or equal to 0, then we know we can get, at least, we can get real solutions. So again, this is all in an effort to find the domain. Well, only one principle of equality needed to solve this. I'll just add 3 to both sides there. That's going to zero that out, drop my x, which is now greater than or equal to 3. Uh, well, it, that's the, in, the inequality, but we want the interval. So add 3 there. Uh, again, x could equal 3, so it's a closed circle, but it's eating the x, so that goes to the right, which tells us the interval starting at 3, which is included, also goes all the way to infinity. Uh, again, this is for the domain. So any value, including 3 and up, would give us some kind of real value from the function. Now that we have that, let's go to the table. So... Uh, if this is saying uh, f of 16, by the way, so instead of it being the square root of x minus 3 there, we now say the x is 16. So replace the x with 16, and you get the square root. 16 minus 3 is a 13. Now, if that, if that could be simplified, or if it was a perfect square, we would, but it can't, so it's done. Same thing is going to work for this one. Again, that's f of... 5 is really what it's asking for. So we're looking for the square root of x minus 3, but we now have a value to replace x with, which is 5. And that would be the square root of 5 minus 3, which is 2. And that's, that's the one we want there.